Why don't airplanes fly over the Pacific Ocean? Have you ever looked at a flight map and wondered why airplanes don't just fly straight across the Pacific Ocean? I mean, it seems like the shortest route, right? Well, the answer isn't as simple as you might think. Today, we're diving into the fascinating reasons behind why airlines avoid flying directly over the Pacific Ocean. From the curvature of the Earth to safety regulations, there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. So, buckle up, and let's take off into this intriguing topic. First, let's address the most common misconception, airplanes do fly over the Pacific Ocean, but not in the way you might expect. If you've ever flown from Los Angeles to Tokyo or Sydney to San Francisco, you've definitely crossed the Pacific. However, the flight paths aren't straight lines across the ocean. Instead, they often curve northward, passing closer to Alaska or Russia. Why is that? Let's break it down. 1. The Earth isn't flat, great circle routes. First things first, the Earth is round. I know, shocking, right? But this actually plays a huge role in how flight paths are planned. When you look at a flat map, it might seem like flying straight across the Pacific is the shortest route. But on a globe, the shortest distance between two points isn't a straight line, it's a curve called a great circle route. Great circle routes take advantage of the Earth's curvature to minimize distance. For example, a flight from Los Angeles to Tokyo do doesn't go straight west across the Pacific. Instead, it curves northward, passing near Alaska. This path is actually shorter than flying directly across the ocean. So, it's not about avoiding the Pacific, it's about taking the most efficient route. 2. Safety First, ETOPS Regulations Now, let's talk about safety. Flying over vast stretches of water comes with risks. If something goes wrong, you can't just land anywhere. That's where ETOPS comes in. ETOPS stands for Extended Range Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards. It's a set of rules that determine how far twin-engine airplanes can fly from the nearest suitable airport in case of an emergency. Before Ethiopia's, twin-engine planes weren't allowed to fly more than 60 minutes away from the nearest airport. That meant they had to stick close to land, avoiding long stretches of ocean. But with advancements in technology, modern planes like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner can now fly up to 330 minutes away from the nearest airport. This has opened up more routes over the Pacific, but airlines still need to plan carefully to ensure safety. 3. Weather and Turbulence Over the Pacific Another factor is the weather. The Pacific Ocean is notorious for its unpredictable and often severe weather conditions. From massive storms to strong jet streams, flying over the Pacific can be bumpy and not just for your coffee. Airlines prefer routes that minimize turbulence and keep passengers comfortable. Jet streams, which are fast-flowing air currents in the atmosphere, can either help or hinder a flight. Flying with a jet stream can save time and fuel, but flying against it can slow you down. Over the Pacific, these jet streams can be particularly strong, so airlines often choose routes that take advantage of favorable winds while avoiding areas of severe turbulence. 4. Fuel Efficiency and Cost Savings Let's talk about fuel. Flying over the Pacific Ocean requires a lot of it and fuel is expen expensive. Airlines are always looking for ways to save money, and optimizing flight paths is a big part of that. By taking great circle routes and avoiding headwinds, airlines can reduce fuel consumption and save millions of dollars each year. Additionally, flying at higher altitudes over the ocean can improve fuel efficiency. But this also requires careful planning to ensure the plane can reach an alternate airport in case of an emergency. It's a delicate balance between saving money and ensuring safety. 5. Political and airspace restrictions. Did you know that the sky is divided into invisible borders? Just like countries on the ground, airspace is controlled by different nations, and flying through it requires permission. Some countries have strict regulations or may charge high fees for overflight rights. Over the Pacific, there are fewer land masses, which means fewer airspace restrictions. But when planning routes, airlines still need to consider political factors, especially when flying near sensitive areas. This can influence the path an airplane takes, even if it's not the most direct route. 6. Historical routes and navigation challenges. Let's take a step back in time. 
In the early days of aviation, flying over the Pacific was a huge challenge. Navigation technology was limited, and long-distance flights were risky. Early routes often followed coastlines or island chains to ensure pilots could find their way and make emergency landings if needed. Even though modern airplanes have advanced navigation systems, some of these historical routes have influenced today's flight paths. Airlines tend to stick to well-established corridors that have been proven safe and efficient over time. 7. The Role of Technology and Future Trends Technology is constantly evolving, and so are flight paths. With advancements in aircraft design, navigation systems, and weather forecasting, we're seeing more efficient and direct routes over the Pacific. For example, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner and Airbus A350 are designed to fly longer distances with greater fuel efficiency, opening up new possibilities for trans-Pacific travel. In the future, we might see even more direct routes as technology continues to improve. But for now, the combination of safety, efficiency, and practicality means that flying over the Pacific Ocean will always involve careful planning and strategic routing. 8. Passenger Comfort and Experience Let's not forget about the passengers. Airlines are always looking for ways to improve the flying experience, and that includes choosing routes that minimize discomfort. Flying over the Pacific can mean long stretches without land, which can be unsettling for some passengers. By choosing routes that stay closer to land or follow favorable weather patterns, airlines can provide a smoother and more enjoyable experience for their passengers. After all, happy passengers are loyal passengers. So, the next time you're on a flight crossing the Pacific, you'll know why your plane is taking that curved route. It's not just about avoiding the ocean, it's about safety, efficiency, and a whole lot of science. Thanks for joining me on this journey through the skies. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more fascinating content. Until next time, happy travels!